Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for, for joining this Q&A. Uh, yes, my name is Irvin Huerta. I'm the convener of the, of the data schools at Cambridge Digital Humanities. And today, we're hopefully going to kind of explain a little bit about this, this, this new um, version of, of the data schools, a short cultural heritage data school. And uh, to do so, I'm just going to present uh, briefly, let me present, uh, share my screen, and I hope that everyone can see that, All right? So is uh, the, the short cultural head of the state school um, from the 17th to the 18th of April, so a couple of days this year. And this is the way in which um, we would like to, to go about it. So I'm just going to give a, a brief introduction. Um, I'm going to talk about the content for this iteration. Um, and later on, she's going to talk about one of her modules, one of the modules that she's going to be teaching. Then just practicalities, really, about visiting Cambridge in April. And uh, we're going to finish with a Q&A. So points one to four, as Anne was saying, they're going to be, they are being recorded. Uh, point five, with, with your questions and our answers, are not going to be recorded. So feel free to either post your questions in the chat or wait till, till we, we, we arrive at that stage. And then we, we expect to finish before 12.40, 12.45 or so, uh, even earlier than that, probably. So just as an introduction um, and background of the, of the data schools, at CDH in the University of Cambridge, we have uh, certain objectives we, we have certain aims, and uh, these aims are democratizing access to tools and methods for digital data collection, analysis, and reporting. We put these tools and these methods in, in, in the hands of, of practitioners, of the people, etc. Right? We, we foster the development of ethical practices in digital research at large, data humanities. We encourage, and I think this is a, an important part of, of our role, and particularly the data schools, a dialogue between academia, civil society, the public sector, the industry, uh, about ethical and policy implications in digital research methods, right? And we provide practical instruction and uh, advice, knowledge exchange across sectors, professions and disciplines. So the data schools is definitely a place where uh, academia, practitioners, civil society at large uh, uh, meets. And um, in particular for the cultural heritage, we have um, our cultural heritage data schools, right? Which in this occasion for April, we have a short version of it. It is two days instead of a, of a week, which is usually the, the, the length of the data schools or two weeks in some occasions. We have this short course. Uh, we organize it at, at CDH in the University of Cambridge and our students, we learn new methods and theories, theories in digital humanities uh, from leading academics, uh, practitioners in the field. I'm going to talk about more of that later, but um, teachers, your teachers are going to be um, people who are working in our M field in digital humanities, people who are also based in, 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 the, in the library of the University of Cambridge from the Fitz Museum, the Fitzwilliam Museum as well. So, um, you know, that's what you're going to, to find and we're calling, really, uh, participants from the GLAM sector. This is galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, and academia, uh, researchers, lecturers, to explore methods used to create, visualize, anal analyze digital archives and collections. In particular, we'll be looking at textual data and visual data. Um, I'm going to talk about that uh, in detail in a second. Um, but yeah, same, right? Who, who should apply? Professionals, really, we would like to have a lot of people working with, with collections in, in the GLAM sector. As I said, researchers, lecturers, anyone really who is working on, on cultural heritage projects. So you're welcome to, to apply and come and, and have these discussions with us. Um, the cost. Um, we have a standard rate of 150. Uh, for the two days, and we have five places for concessions. 
So we have five concessions at 145. Uh, we have a few comments there about what uh, involves a standard rate and what is a concessionary place. Briefly, I can say that a standard rate is applicable if you are part of an organization with paid staff, right? Although um, there is an opportunity to apply for a discounted rate if your organization runs uh, or has a small number of paid staff or limited funding, right? Um, volunteering work, charity work, that's, that kind of, uh, of work can, can be also uh, counted as concessions. And um, yeah, for concessions, um, we have five places for the unemployed community or funded projects. Um, and we have also two bursaries, two places for bursaries, right? So um, at no cost, the only cost that you have to, to cover is accommodation and transport, of course. Yes. And what does it include? Um, well, the, the fee includes uh, 11 to, to 12 hours of sessions, access to online teaching uh, resources, um, a spaces for discussion with top practitioners and peers. So we're gonna have some, some spaces to, to, to talk and even walk together. Um, we're gonna have a couple of troubleshooting sessions because there is a, I mean, a, a, some uh, uh, work on installing and preparing software. So um, we're gonna have some of those sessions and catering, well, although the catering is, I mean, limited to refreshments and one lunch uh, sandwich buffet per day, right? You have to bring your laptop, very important. If you can't bring, bring your laptop um, on which you can install software, right? Um, so we're not going to provide any equipment, but you're gonna have Wi-Fi and all the other university premises as well available for you if you come. So yeah, that's, uh, that's mainly what the fee includes. Important dates for it. Um, the, the deadline for application is is open, but at the same time not open till uh, I mean forever, right? So it is we're admitting your submissions on a first come first served basis, right? And uh, we have twenty five places available in total. So we're gonna close applications once we we we, we reach the twenty five uh, participants, right? but we, we would not uh, accept participants later than 11th April. So if you're interested by 11th April, please uh, submit your application, right? Um, yeah, so just to, to kind of underscore that, we are, we are not selecting, we don't have a selection process. So for, for this short program, you, we usually have, but not for, not, not for this short program. So um, the, the, the sooner you, you apply, the better, really. Uh, you, you secure your place. And of course, the data school happening from the 17th to 18th of April, you're gonna have access to online resources on our virtual learning environment, probably a, a week before, and you're going to continue to have some access to that for probably a, a couple of weeks more too. So um, just, just so you know. Now, let me talk about the content. Um, so this is roughly the content. I hope you, you can appreciate the two days over there. On the grid later on, we're going to have a a, a glossier PDF and, and, and uh, something that is going to look much nicer. But this is kind of uh, the the confirmed, the just recently confirmed uh, curriculum, the, the schedule for you. So we're going to have um, uh, principles of lab imaging um, with people from the library with a digital content unit. Um, we're going to have uh, also principle. Sorry, that's that's principles of Im glam imaging with magic. And before that, we're going to have a, a session uh, with Suzanne Poole, also from the library. Um, and that's going to be about. Uh, it's really a visit uh, in the library with 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 manuscripts and rare collections. So um, yeah, we're going to start with with that visit, and I hope you, you also find it exciting. Later on, we have uh, sessions like working with digital images at scale. As you can see, uh, and as I was saying at the beginning, this, this day, the first day is going to be images. We're going to be focusing on images. Um, a second session connected to that one, also by Anne, Machine Vision, a Critical Introduction. 
Um, later, we're going to have a, a, a quick talk about the Constable Project with Caroline Bassett, our, our director, and Andy Corrigan, um, also from, from the library, she's going to talk, he's going to talk about digital spaces, interoperability and interaction, which is mainly a, a, an introduction to visualization and 3D content. So we, we go from, you know, the manuscripts, physical manuscripts, retrieval of data, and then visualization. And we're going to follow a similar path for day two, uh, but that's going to be focused on text. So we're going to start um, actually with, uh, with something also exciting and, and, and fun, which is the visit of people from the Fitz uh, Museum, from the Fitzwilliam Museum. They're going to talk to us about uh, some of the projects that, they, that, that they're running um, on, on text analysis and text research um, with, with Alexandra uh, um, and the fit. Well, I, I just cannot really remember her, her surname over there, but uh, it's, it's also the, the team from the Fitzwilliam Museum. Um, oh, Alexandra Moore, sorry. Alexandra Moore from, from, from the Fitzwilliam Museum. And we're going to continue with Anna Alexander, um, a session on digital research design and the project life cycle, um, focusing on also, um, you know, some of the steps to, to follow our project. And then Hugh Jones um, on collecting and wrang uh, wrangling textual data. I'm going to finish with text analysis and visualization um, with Andrea Coxis, which is who is part of our, our, our research uh, methods fellow. Uh, or method method fellows at uh, at CDH. So those are the two days. Uh, the first focused on on images. The second on on text. And um, just some some important things to, to bear in mind. Uh, if if you if you join, if you um, uh, are accepted to to the data school, you have access to to the library and some some collections at the University of Cambridge. Um, and yes, I think I mentioned this before, course materials will include links to further tutorials and resources that are going to be accessible online um, for you to study, to, to uh, um, just uh, bring more benefit from it for, for, for a couple of weeks or so. So that's um, part of the, of the content that you're going to be uh, receiving as part of the data schools. And um, yes, yeah, so as, as I was saying, we have... Um, uh, teaching staff who is part of of CDH, either teaching in the in the in our M field in digital humanities, or part of the of the library team, the digital content unit, or from our method fellows program. So that's Anna Alexander, Andrea Coxis, Hugh Jones, Andy Corrigan, all of them uh, leading academics and people who are actually engaged in in projects that have to do with. Um, public interventions or interventions, um, you know, in, in, in the industry. And Maciek Pavilovsky as well from the digital uh, collection um, content unit in the library as well. Some requirements um, for, for the data school, mainly your laptop. We cannot really emphasize this enough. Bring, bring your laptop, um, very, very important, right? Um, just um, a few things that, that, that you might need, although this list might um, grow a little bit more later. But we know that you're going to be using OpenRefine, uh, Anaconda Navigator, that's um, uh, something that helps you to, to navigate through Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Notebook and uh, some Python packages, which involves a little bit of coding, although it is not a requirement, any kind of uh, coding ability or skill. Um, we're going to be mentioning a few a few online tools for visualization, like MorphoSource or Sketchfab. Although um, we're not going to to have a, a particular module on on those on those things on those two, they're just going to be mentioned and probably helpful for you to to know that they exist and um, to play with them a little bit. Um, you will need some, some accounts uh, to, to explore some resources, particularly for Anne's session. So a Google account, um, if you don't have one, probably you can create um, just a temporary one. And a GitHub account as well. Uh, she's going to, to use some resources that are on a GitHub uh, thread. So you, you, you might want to, to get one of those accounts. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's all with technical requirements. 
And um, yeah, that's kind of the first two points. Um, the introduction, the content of the, of the short cultural heritage data school from the 17th to the 18th of April. And I'm going to hand over to, to Anne, who's going to talk to us about her own module. So Anne. Um, thanks very much, Irving. So uh, I'll just give you a little bit of an overview of the kind of approach that we'll have in the um, first day of the data school of the sessions that I'm teaching and co-teaching with Hugh Jones. Um, and as you'll see, there's a theme uh, in the first day around working with images. And what we're hoping to set up is, you know, a sense of where you actually can meet some of the physical objects that are digitized later in our University of Cambridge collections. So some of our manuscripts, um, but then actually start to look at the digital surrogates of those physical objects, um, particularly interested in working with them at scale. So Hugh will be um, showing you, for example, how to work with the IIIF uh, um, framework, which is a standard for working with images that allows, for example, uh, machine learning um, systems to, uh, you know, to collect images that you might need for using in machine learning systems. So, for example, to classify images uh, uh, automatically. Um, We'll demonstrate some of these techniques um, using a, a, a visual programming in, interface called ImageGraph, which was um, uh, written by my colleague, Leo Impert. Um, the idea behind this is actually to give you a hands-on taster to explain some of the principles in machine learning um, vision architectures. So computer vision, um, machine learning based computer vision systems. Um, this is not, going to you know you won't come out of this with a, a kind of very detailed knowledge or a technic a technical knowledge really of the insides of a machine learning system it's more about uh, um, overall principles and in particular a kind of critical approach which argues that machine learning tools are interpretive tools that they are ones that need to be approached you know, with the same same degree of of kind of uh, of uh, of critical thinking as you would any other way in which you view culture, um, uh, whether at scale or in uh, uh, you know in, in, a, in a in a in a more um, small scale way. Um, so we'll be using that as a the introduction to. Um, you know, creating an image classifier is something that you don't you don't have to have any coding knowledge to be able to do this. If you want to follow along and try out um, using this visual programming language yourself, that's why you'll need um, a Google account and um, uh, because it uses Google Colab, um, which is a browser based um, system and also a GitHub, a GitHub account. Um, so those are the, the the there's a mixture of both theoretical approaches to help you understand the, the the principles of these systems but also then to apply in a small scale way some of those principles yourself to be able to see more easily um you know some of, as an illustration of the of the points that the points that we're making but i just want to emphasize again that you don't need to know any programming for this and you don't need to there will be no special software involved it will all run um this can run in your browser um, and you simply need a uh, free based free accounts in order to be able to access it. Um, I'll also be running a session the following morning, which will be uh, around the research design process for data intensive research, which will be a short session looking at the kind of overall project life cycle. Um, and uh, again, I'll probably be working, we'll be working with, uh, with Hugh in that session and the one after looking at the steps you need to go through. Um, when collecting and working with textual data as a as a preliminary step towards um, data analysis, which is then what um, Andrea will be working on, da and data analysis and visualization in the afternoon session. So um, I'll finish there and hand back over to Irving. Yeah, sure. Don't worry. I think actually you're going to. Well, if you want to to add also something about visiting visiting Cambridge. Um, because this is the first iteration in which we are doing it in Cambridge, actually. Because we, so far we've been doing data schools online um, after the pandemic. 
So this is going to be our, our, our first edition uh, doing it in Cambridge. So um, yeah, I can just probably go through it and then later and if, if you can add some in something to, to, to um, those two days in Cambridge. Um, we're going to be Monday and Tuesday, 17th and 18th of April, 2023. All our sessions are going to take place from 9.30 and 5 p.m. Sorry about starting at 9.30 a.m. on Monday. It's um, uh, The sessions are packed, the days are packed with sessions. So we're starting early and finishing around 5 p.m. We have a few breaks, as you could see in the, um, um, in the, in the program. But yeah, we're starting at 9.30 and then uh, we have not back-to-back, -back, but almost back-to-back -back sessions up until 5 p.m. Um, in Central University buildings and Sidwick sites as well, if you know Cambridge. It's very close to each other, not, not more than 10, 15 minutes walk from, from, from each side. Um, um, you will have to book your own travel uh, and accommodation. So the fees do not include uh, accommodation or travel we we do recommend a few sites for you to to look into into accommodation uh, there are some university rooms available but that that's something that you have to sort out by yourself um airbnbs of course speaking.com other hotels that uh, you can you can find in the area right we're going to have a, a a dinner in a local, in a local restaurant uh, we're planning to to have this dinner on the evening of the 17th of April. This is not compulsory. This is just in case you want to to join us for that for that dinner. Um, but this is an additional cost, of course. Uh, this is going to be you, you're going to pay for 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 your own consumption uh, on that day. Uh, more details about about this this dinner in a local restaurant in Cambridge uh, will be provided to registered participants later. Right, closer to the school. And um, I suppose those kind of are, are the main practical things. Um, of course, uh, another practical thing to, to bear in mind is that you're going to have access to, to Wi-Fi, to um, um, also local cafes in, 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 the, in the university, spaces for, for collaboration with colleagues and, and, and teachers as well. Um, and you can enjoy Cambridge um, uh, either after 5 p.m. or, uh, you know, during lunchtime as well. You can decide to, to arrive uh, in Cambridge maybe one day or a couple of days before or stay one more day or whatever you, you decide. Of course, the accommodation will be um, something that you have to sort out by yourself. Um, but mainly, mainly those practical things, uh, and unless you want to add anything else. Um, no, I didn't really have anything else to um, to add in terms of the in terms of the practicalities. So, okay. Um, yeah. And I suppose now. Oh yes, well, th those are kind of our contact details. You can you can write to 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 that to those uh, email addresses to to Florence Harry, who is our communications and events coordinator, or to me as well. So you can you can see them there. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter and all the social media, right? And I suppose, yeah, we, we wait for you to register and then to, to, to see you and show some time and uh, interesting conversations in Cambridge on the 17th and 18th of April, 2023, right?